Welcome to the XY Advisor podcast. To join a global community of financial advisors sharing and learning with one another to drive the positive evolution of financial advice, head to xyadvisor.com. G'day, g'day. How's it going? What do you know, Strike Light? Um, Victor Borgen here from down in uh, Melbourne. Well and truly quarantined, mate. Hey, how's, how's things down there? Yeah, really good. Really good. We've had some uh, brilliant weather down here, which isn't always usual for Melbourne, but uh, we'll take it while we can. One of the things I was chatting to uh, an advisor about the other day was the fact that a couple of he's lost already a couple of clients during the last couple of weeks, literally just with them getting fired. And he's he's a sort of an out out of, outside of super, so from the bank account charging um, advice, and they they just looked at him and went, "You're doing such a good job, but um, it's the first thing to go, you know, it's the first thing on, on the on the chopping block." Um, and then on the flip side of that, I've seen a handful of people get hired in the last week or two because, or oh, they've had extra demand and too much work to uh, to get through. So where do you, where do you think the sentiment is out there in terms of not so much market volatility, because I think that's, you know, we're all sort of used to that to a certain extent. But this, this sort of brand new environment that we find ourselves in where, you know, a lot of people are getting rapidly um, you know, exited from their work. Um, but at the same time, because of everything that's going on, more people are wanting advice. Where do you think sort of the market is sitting in general in terms of people coming in and out of advice? I think, I think it's interesting that um, in these sorts of environments and times and probably the more recent one we had was the GFC, but in, in our world we're seeing, um, you know, plenty of demand from people needing advice and wanting advice. Um, we're also seeing people that can't necessarily afford it or um, they're seeking advice either because they've got opportunities or they want to take opportunities um, and we're seeing people that, that, that want to need advice because they're in, in, in financial difficulty. So it's, it is challenging. It's different to what we've been used to. How we've been managing that, um, if we've had existing clients, uh, we've, again, we've had existing clients, some who are in strong positions where they want to take the opportunity of investing or uh, which, which, um, which we've been talking about for a long time and we'll probably talk about you know, there, there's plenty of people where we've been waiting for something like this um, to take that opportunity with some clients. Um, there's, you know, a couple of our clients who have lost jobs and, you know, really can't afford to continue paying our advice fees. That's just the reality of it, right? So the the way that the, the approach that we've taken is that, you know, we're, we're doing it tough as an industry already and not just uh, in running a business but also emotionally and uh, with everything going on in the world we're in. But I think, you know, they still need us and we know that that's kind of what well, we want to do the right thing by them. So um, we will put pe- our clients on fee holidays. On the flip side of that, as I said, we've had some clients where there's opportunities to to provide further advice or do something further, um, whether they're existing clients or new opportunities, they need help, just some guidance, need to chat to someone, so I'm going to put them on the straight and narrow. Again, at a time when there's so much going on and it's advice is more important than ever, it's it's kind of, it, it's difficult, like, you to, to, to do that, to say, don't worry about whether we're getting paid for this work or not, but... If there's any time to where, where it's important, now's the time. Yeah, wow. I've seen that kind of behaviour, I guess, charging mentality from uh, a few gyms um, and a few other sort of ongoing services where they're saying, look, just for the minute, we're going to you know, reduce your fees or, or in some cases um, freeze it rather than losing the client altogether. Some people are, are in that sort of situation. And it makes me wonder, you know, I don't have my practice anymore, but I think, what, you know, would I do that? Because I guess you're still accepting a decent amount of risk in having someone on as a client. And then if you're not being uh, remunerated for the risk at all, let alone service, then, um, yeah, it's a tricky, it's a tricky position. If, if I think about what I would do, I would probably 
pause the client. But then again, I guess if you're, if you're pausing a client and you're not delivering, uh, you know, annual reviews and all these things, then there's a chance that you'll have to sort of pay back everything that was charged due to, you know, the, um, the new rules that have come out. It's kind of a weird situation where advisors would probably really like to be able to bend and swerve and sway with what's happening um, in terms of coronavirus uh, and people losing their job. But in a lot of ways, hands are tied. It's just, I guess, another way that this industry is, is just constantly getting in the way of itself. It's almost remarkable, I guess, if you think about what advice is from an advisor's point of view of where we are right now. You know, we're like insanely overly legislated and rules and regulations. And a lot of it is um, in a lot of ways kind of superfluous. I mean, honestly, the regulators are just trying to get it to a situation where if people get advice, they end up in a better situation than not. But the chances of that happening now, the chances of someone finding a bad apple, so to speak, is probably lower than it's ever been. And yet we're in an environment that's more regulated than it's ever been. And situations like having to pay back fees after, say, 12 months of work just because you know, one of the things wasn't ticked over, it's pretty crazy. And, and I think it's, it's going to end up, again, in a sort of a, a lower quality outcome for advisors or for clients and it's it's a massive shame and I, I i really wish it was a lot simpler than that are you still looking at bringing on new clients while we're we're in lockdown is that something that's still at the front of your mind yeah i mean absolutely we're not um actively doing any, anything major but we've got we've got new inquiries and we're not knocking them back and it's a challenge to keep up with it but um, yeah, we're certainly trying to trying to help those people, um, and balancing that with what what we just spoke about um, in terms of putting clients on fee holidays or pausing them or what do you do? I think that it, it's it, it is such a challenge, and um, you, you know we certainly won't be just helping people willy nilly. There's going to be a point where you just can't do it. So I think we're just taking the approach of we're doing we're going to do our best. We're going to do the best we can, but, you know, it's, it's not like we can just keep doing it forever and for anyone. And even putting clients on fee holidays, it might come to the point where we can't keep doing that as well. It's, we're, we're in uncharted territory. Um, it, we're, we're trying to do it from the perspective of as long as we can stay financial um, and, you know, caring for other people, doing it out of love, just trying to, you know, get people through a situation that's really difficult. I mean, if we're stressed out about what's going on there, imagine people that have got no idea about energy money. Yeah, look, it's it's a very strange uh, situation. I mean, even the concept of talking about a fee holiday, wow, a couple of months ago it would have been, you know, something very unique that I wouldn't have even, even considered. And to sort of, you know, hear about that's now a, an opportunity, I guess, to... To what we can do to keep clients on is, I mean, it just goes to show how, how strange the world is right now. Um, mm. Are you, if, if you're getting sort of a, a bit of inbound interest in terms of taking advantage of the, the market of what's happening now, do you have a sort of a bit of a process that just says, well, okay, these people probably don't need an advisor, um, but these people do need an advisor. Do you have somewhat of a, a filtering process to make sure you're only spending time on the people that actually would get value out of advice? Yeah, so I guess our, our, we, we're sticking with the same process that we used, that, we, that we've been using um, whenever we get inbound inquiries. Uh, so essentially we, we've got a starting point of where we're happy to talk to anyone, even if we know that they're not going to be clients. I guess it comes from the position of where I see us in a profession, we're in a, um, where we're there to serve and, you know, hopefully getting paid well to do that. But there's certainly an element of community service. It's not about weeding out the, you know, weeding out the people that aren't going to be profitable or whatever at a really minimum 
point. So we'll offer, you know, an initial call or chat with, with pretty much anybody because we know that we're, we're more than happy to do that whether or not we're, we're getting paid for it. Yeah, right. Um, I mean, there's so much interest in uh, purchasing into the market right now that, um, you know, Yahoo Finance, just funnily enough, I was uh, just chilling out on the couch yesterday afternoon. I get a call out of the blue from Yahoo Finance. They're like, look, we're getting so much traffic asking about shares. Um, can you come on and tell people how to buy shares? And I was like, whoa, this is, uh, this is out of control. First and foremost, you do know that I'm no one of interest and no one's going to care that I'm on your thing. That's first and foremost. Uh, second of all, the fact that people go from not knowing anything about the market to I'm going to start purchasing a bunch of shares because it's discounted. I mean, it's, it's, a, good, it's a good starting point but at the end of the day, you get yourself into a lot of trouble and it's kind of like you either have money to lose and if you have money to lose, you should definitely go see a financial planner. And if you don't have money to lose, then probably getting overly involved is not the best idea. Uh, when you talk to people um, and you sort of say, look, we may not be, because I'm, I'm just trying to figure out how to say this nicely as well uh, to, to a bunch of people. But how do, what's kind of the, the words you use to, to tell people if they don't have the income or the assets, then potentially getting involved uh, with an advisor or getting involved even with the market by itself. Um, how do you do that community service? Because it is a community service. I remember when I was in university and had my first sort of tax accounting job and I was trading quite a bit and I still didn't really know anything. Uh, I made a couple of bucks, lost a couple of bucks. Um, but realistically, I had no business being in the market. It's kind of a, a, a kind of a weird topic, but I think it's one that we sort of need to approach at the moment because the amount of people that have so much to learn and yet can't afford an advisor either through income or assets is probably going to be so large that this is a conversation that I imagine a number of advisors are going to be having. So what's one of the nicest ways that you let down someone um, nicely, I guess, is probably the best way to put it. Um, I guess I'd, I'd, I'd frame it a bit differently because I think the way that that's something that's coming up right now where people want to take advantage of the market. If we go back to our um, extending on, on our client initial client engagement mm -hmm. process, this isn't you know, the right way or whatever, but this is just our way. And, and the way that we've structured our business is that for a client to be the right fit for us, uh, we're not doing just transactional work or um, instruction-based work or superficial type work. And that's, that's just a choice that we've made. Uh, the rationale behind that is that we know that if we work with clients on that basis, we can help them a little bit but we know that if we help we if we work with someone at a much deeper level then we can have a far bigger impact in their lives so as a business we've made the decision that we only want to do work that's deeply impactful yeah. in the lives of other people is is how I put it which means that we say no to the superficial work as much as possible again that's not that's easy to say um, and but 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 that's how we that's how we approach it and that's our intent what that means is that we don't start with goals when we're talking with clients, but we start with purpose and we spend quite a bit of time. Firstly, we tell clients, what I'm telling you, we tell clients this as well. So if you just want to buy shares, go and talk to a stockbroker right? mm. or, or do it yourself, right? If you can do it yourself, do it yourself. We're not just starting with your goals. We want to understand what's important to you in life. We want to start with your purpose. The other thing that we intentionally do is uh, we don't answer the questions that clients ask because every client comes with, this is what I want to do, or these are the questions I have. But uh, having done this for long enough, I know that the questions that they're asking may not actually be the right questions. So we definitely see our role as not just answering the questions that clients ask. It doesn't mean we're not going to answer them at all, but our role really importantly is to help clients find their own answers by asking the right questions. Yeah. So we want to ask them enough questions and, and engage them in such a way that they actually realize what the right answers are, not them coming to us with questions. So they might say, I want to buy shares because the market's cheap. 
that's not actually a purpose driven driven question so we take it back to what is their purpose what's important to them what are they trying to achieve and help that that will sort of get out of them what they need to do um and often that means oh okay maybe we shouldn't be actually buying shares right now so i think for those experienced advisors out there we you know we know how to take clients on that journey where you don't have to tell them you know what the hell are you talking about there's no way you should be doing that but letting them see themselves by asking them really good questions and then letting them see see that for themselves yeah that's i mean that's that's a much better way of framing it um, i love that you start the conversations with purpose i i feel like that's kind of the pinnacle in terms of what where i see financial advice is that what do you want out of life and then let's use your cash flow to achieve that in the short term and then your assets to achieve that in the long term because you know purpose often does change over time as well so what you want now is probably different to what you want later in life and sort of making sure that there's enough enough money to draw down later in life and you're not working to hit your purpose then as well is why you build assets. And so it's great to hear um, that sort of dialogue coming from um, an advisor. Do you, do you sort of have a, have a group of advisors that you share with on a regular basis or, or how did you get your service offering to the point where you were comfortable? And, and that's kind of a, the, the question that I want to ask is how did you become comfortable with asking these questions? Because they're obviously very deep questions. They're questions that most people never get asked in their life. Um, mm. And, and the people are just so much, so better adept at answering, you know, what you did today or like how was yesterday or whatever the questions that were answered, the, the superficial questions were answered on a, on a frequently on a frequent basis, but this question, which is probably the most important question you get, get asked in your entire life. And now someone with a job called financial planner is asking these questions. How did you get comfortable or who did, who taught you how to do this? Like, how did you get to a stage where you said, actually, I want to do everything a financial planner does, but I want to make sure that I'm on the right path with this particular client from day dot that we have a pretty clear trajectory and then we can pivot as required. How, how did you get to that situation? Yeah, good question. It's, um, it's certainly not anything that, that I've come up with. It's absolutely been just learning, listening, reading, absorbing um, over quite a number of years. Um, it's, so I guess just a, bit of, just a bit of history then. I mean, I got into... I started in the industry over 20 years ago while I was still studying, but started full time, what, 2003, I think it was, uh, in a small firm, maybe, yeah, 2003, 2004. I started with a company called The Money Managers, a guy called Kevin Bailey, who was, you know, kind of one of the pioneers in, in financial planning. Um, and I've got a lot of younger advisors on the, uh, in the XY group who may not know of know of him and some of the others, but there's there's so much we can learn from some of these older guys, even if they were running different models to what we run now. Mm-hmm. And then and then our business, I became a partner in that a shareholder in that business um, after a couple of years. Uh, we then joined. Um, we were the largest firm to uh, form part of Shadforth. Um, for those who might know know the business, so that was a national group. Um, and I mean, I was really lucky in some of the people that were part of that group, the knowledge, the the quality of advisors in in that group shed forth. Yeah, I guess for, for some context, I, I left in a, a couple of years ago, just over two years ago to start, start my own firm. Um, and I guess what some of that learning has come through all the different people that I've spoken to and learnt from. Um, Probably, and that's just come from reading, listening, you know, podcasts, you know, really good stuff out of the US, all around the world. Um, and I think the important, probably the most important, very generalised thing that led me to doing that was, I guess, working with people like Kevin Bailey, where he was very much, we always question everything we do. We always try and improve what we're doing. We've always got something to learn. Nothing we do is always 
final, like we can always keep improving, um, which automatic, if you're in that mindset, then you're always trying to learn, trying to improve yourself. And that forces you to listen, learn, absorb from other people as things change, get different perspectives, um, which has helped to kind of frame a lot of the things that, that we're doing. Um, again, it's not perfect. We're working through so many different things, trying to improve what we're doing all the time still. Um, but that the idea of getting the confidence to be able to ask that, I guess, you know, if, if you were a if you're a really good mechanic, right? Mm. Someone and you know, I don't know anything about cars, but if I took my car to the mechanic and he goes, "Buddy, this is what you need to do, and this is going to make your car run better," I'd just go, "All right, cool, let's do it." Right? For that mechanic to say that and to as long as he was a good guy and he was actually caring about me as a person wanting to do a really good job. And he was, and he had honed his skills to the point where he was an expert in his field, then that would be the best outcome. And he would just do it with confidence. Um, I think one of the things that sometimes we worry about because of public perception, because of media, because of all the, you know, Royal commission and all the stuff that goes, goes on and the negative connotation with financial planning is that that knocks our confidence right and even clients and markets there's all these external factors i think what's really hard but what we have to try really hard to do is as long as we're you know as long as we're doing the right thing as long as we care about the people we're looking after as long as we've got the technical expertise to give good advice then we should be totally confident and i think if if we're taking the approach of i'm here to help this person achieve everything that's important in their life and I'm totally confident that that is my intention and we're going to do the right thing and we've got the expertise to deliver it, then there's no reason why I shouldn't be able to confidently ask the client any question and justifiably so. And I think when you're confident that comes through to clients and they actually appreciate it when you, and again, it's, it's sometimes it's hard because some clients are super, oh, I just want to know the answer to that question or I just want to know how I can save tax or I just want to know that. But if you can push clients along past that, past those superficial technical type questions into the realm of purpose, then they will appreciate it forever if you can do it. Now, some clients you try to do it with and they will never go there. Yeah. And unfortunately, that's just the way it is. But other clients, the more you push, um, some get pushed away, but some will cross that line. And once they do that, they just go, I don't know what I used to do without you. <laughs> yeah. That's when you just have that relationship and you're genuinely doing it to help them and you're genuinely going to make a massive impact in their lives. No, it's so true. Um, I remember, yeah, what, that was one of the, by the time I'd sold my practice, if someone wanted to come on as a client, then yeah, we sort of had to go through a bit of a, I, I kind of put up a few hurdles and one of them was, well, what do you want out of life? Like, what's your purpose in life? And I, it, it, the gravity of that question, watching it sort of, you know, hit, hit the client's face was it never got old. Sometimes it was a, how dare you ask me that? Sometimes it was a, wow, that's a massive question. How do I answer that? But then I guess it's, it's, it's framing it in a way you can sort of soften the blow different ways. You can sort of prepare them for the question that's coming. And um, it, it ended up becoming quite a, a skill just to be able to have the, you know, the temerity to ask the question in a way that made people comfortable. Um, I know a lot of, of my clients were, by the end, certainly by, by the time I'd gotten a little bit better at it, but I certainly wouldn't say I was the best at it, but just even asking that question was um, such a powerful part of my advice process that, um, yeah, it's, it, it became um, a key part of, you know, it, it also made the job more enjoyable for me, I found, because if I understood my client better and I understood the reasons why I was giving this advice more deeply than the conversations that would undoubtedly follow over the years were always easier because I could always loop a certain small, let's call it a short time frame goal. Like don't, you, you spent too much here, but don't forget that this, this behavior is having a direct impact upon your purpose and, and, and what falls out of your purpose. The, these handful of things that you're trying to achieve. So it actually made the ability to provide good advice 
easier as well. Um, Absolutely. And to get clients to execute and do what they need to do. Uh, we'll, we'll document those discussions and summarize them into try you know, one sort of slide of these are the things that are most important to you. And then we'll pull it out from time to time with clients and just remind them and say, you know, so these are the things that um, are most important to you. So everything that we do from an advice perspective is in aid of achieving these things. Mm. That's all that matters. There is nothing else that matters apart from these things that you have said are most important to you. Um, and I think one way to, you know, if clients were a bit like, oh, what's this guy on about? He's getting a bit, excuse <laughs> me, it's getting a bit wanky on all this yeah. airy fairy, then, you know, the one way to help a client see why is to just kind of be, like one one option, which is the automatic thing for us to do, and I, I did. I used to do this, was just be like, "Oh, I'm not going to go there. They don't like it. Um, it's uncomfortable. I'll stop doing that, and I'll ask. I'll answer his tax question or his investment question." But then I started asking myself, "Hang on a sec. If if I'm just honest, right? Honesty is underrated. Um, mm. If I'm just honest, and, I, and if I just told the client why I'm actually asking that, maybe that would help. And that's that's what we do now. So we just say so." in order for us to give you the best advice and to help you with your tax and make the best investment decisions, it will be, we'll be able to do that far, far better if we know why you want to do it and what is important to you. That will allow us to do our job far better, which means that we're going to help you a lot more. And that's why we insist on understanding those things. That's so, so good. That's such a good frame. So why would they not want to do that then? Um, yeah. And then, of course, once they start doing it, they realise, oh, this is actually good stuff. And that's when it, that's when it um, you know, kind of goes to that next level of, as you said, engagement, um, execution, uh, and, and actually being able to deliver and buy into the whole advice process. Yeah. And it kind of, it kind of sets, I guess, a tone because advice, you know, back in the day, it was, it was more investment focused and yet, you know, ETFs came around and apps and Comsec came around and it became very easy to execute. And there, there's certainly very few, I'd, I'd imagine, uh, clients or um, advisors who would put their value behind, a, a, you know, their value proposition behind a portfolio. Um, and this, this, this type of question, this type of engagement, it kind of is a signal to the client as well that they've entered into advice land. Like if there was ever a question of what is advice, what does a financial planner do? And then you're sitting there in front of them and you're, you're and I thought that framing was really good. Just honestly, um, you know, articulating that you feel that not only as an advisor, you'll do a better job, but as a client, you'll come along for the process. Um, I, I, it, it's almost, yeah, it's like a trigger to the client to say, wow, I, you now are an advised client. This is the process. And we're starting everything from what it is that you want out of life. And then everything else, all the recommendations are, um, I guess, motivated from the fact that that they're anchoring every single decision because advice can be difficult from the client's point of view as well. Like sometimes really difficult, especially at implementation or behavioral change. And, and so yeah. once you've, once you've got that really tied to that, that purpose in life it made all those decisions a lot easier. Um, and it also allows you, and this is kind of like how, how I sort of became familiar with, with you was that, you're able to give away so much more, I guess, free value might be the way to put it, or, or you're, you're able to sort of um, expand what it is that isn't advice or what comes before advice um, it, astronomically. So, for example, like, and we were having a quick chat before we jumped on the podcast, and, and it, one of those things that I think you do really well is you 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 put thought pieces out there on LinkedIn and, and thought pieces might be a little bit of a, of a, a grandiose term for what it is that you're doing, but you're, you're putting ideas and value 
in a 1200 character LinkedIn update, which, which probably, you know, if you weren't, if you didn't have this massive amount of value to, to give to clients from the moment that they became a client, um, you probably wouldn't be as forthcoming with, you know, quote unquote, your intellectual property or the, what you perceive as, you know, that what only clients get. And, um, and I feel like because you've got this really sturdy 20 years honed um, process, it makes your marketing ability a lot easier as well, which has probably contributed, well, not probably, it definitely contributes to your ability to get attention um, from the market. I mean, I, I reached out to you, uh, you know, when we were chatting, I was like, I, I'd love to get you on a, on a podcast, you know, and, um, and it took us a little while to make that happen. But it was one of those things that even though we rescheduled a handful of times, like I definitely wanted to hear your opinion on things because, and, and it makes so much more sense to me now because you've got this deep value delivery that it allows you to be so much more confident and prominent with your ideas to the public. So man, like I I think you're doing a really good job in terms of um, promoting advice, promoting advisors. And uh, it's, you know, the stuff that you're talking about today, if if advisors were to sit down and process, you know, some of the stuff you've been saying, I think that they could take their quality of advice. You know, they could ratchet it up hugely and rapidly in a very short amount of time. Yeah, thanks, mate. I mean, again, this is all stuff that, you know, just being picked up little bits and pieces along the way and, you know, you've got your your Bill Backracks, your your Jim Stackpools, your your, your Bowens, your um, Dan Solons, uh, you know, there's so many people that, that have just got good wisdom out there and experience and been there, done that. Um, so, and, and you've you got to find the things that work for you. But I think what's really important, for all of us advisors out there is in this tough world that we all live in, we have to have confidence in that, you know, we're, we're helping people. We're actually doing a really good job in helping people. And yes, we, we have to confidently be able to say that and invite them to benefit from that value. We also not need to, but again, and none of this is, the way it's got to be done, it's just, just the way that we do it. But if you can even take it to the level where you say, you know what, not everybody needs advice. Some people can do this themselves. And if they can, great, then they shouldn't pay for advice, right? It's like going back to the mechanic example, if I can fix my car, then, you know, should I go and pay a mechanic to do it? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe I'll do it because I don't want to spend the time. Maybe I'll do it myself because I can do it. You know, so it's a choice, right? So always position yourself where we're here to offer something to clients and it may or may not be for everybody. Um, And also if clients are paying us a fee uh, and this sort of goes back to the whole, um, I guess some of the the things that are coming in around opt-in and FDS and uh, all that sort of stuff is if we're adding genuine value, it does force us to look in the mirror a bit, but if we're adding genuine value, then clients will be happy to pay us a fee for what we're doing. Unfortunately, the reality is that some people don't want to pay for good advice. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, those people may not get advice from the advisors that need to charge a fee. They might end up getting advice from other sources, whether it's, um, you know, their super fund, which might be fine. It's probably just going to be limited. Their, you know, the media, their brother-in-law, whatever it is, but we know that people that pay for advice end up in a far better financial position. The studies have shown it. We all know it's true. Um, but we have to be willing to let people go sometimes because not everyone wants to pay for it and not everyone sees the value in it. Um, there's there's another thing that's, um, you know, because of the the purpose and values-based advice that will, that is our intent in everything we do, again, uh, you know, you've got to have an intent in, in how you try and do it. But... We will tell clients, if you're, our job is not to make you rich. Our job is not to make you money. If you want money, then we're probably not a good fit for you. So we want our clients thinking about purpose. We want them thinking about their values and what they're trying to achieve. If all they're thinking about is making more money, 
then it's probably it's it's probably just not a good fit for the way that we deliver our advice. And you you know you, you do lose people here and there, clients, prospective clients here and there because maybe they just want lots of money, which isn't so. This that's not a judgment thing. It's not a good or a bad thing. It's just that we find that we have much stronger relationships, and we enjoy those relationships with our clients far more if they're not money driven, but they're purpose driven. Obviously, you need to be generating money and you need money to deliver on your purpose. Yeah. But we start with purpose, not start with money. Yeah, it was always a weird thing. And because you're a financial planner, and it's kind of weird. You walk into financial planning and you think, oh, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm here to work with money. And then you, over time, you find out that you're dealing with a lot more than just money. Um, yeah. and, and then, but then you still, over time, you know, if you've been around for, for a while, you still will get those people that walk in and go, oh, I'm, I just want more money. <laughs> and you go, and, and you try to squeeze them into, uh, you're like, oh, well, you know, you've either got enough assets or enough income to warrant being a client. You do want to be a, an advised client. And then just for whatever reason, there's just those type of people that, you know, they're just interested. They're like, ah, I don't want any of this hairy fairy stuff. Just what are you doing with the portfolio? You're like, oh, okay, you're just, you're the guy that, you know, comes in every, every now and again and we just, I just put that hat on, you know. It's kind of, it's almost like a simplistic, more simpler version of advice. But, yeah, it's, it, it is interesting. I mean, every, everyone's different and um, in terms of your clients. Like, it, it's kind of weird. It, I, I think always the goal as an advisor is to try to get everyone, obviously not with the same advice, but at least on the same journey to an outcome. So, so they're at mm-hmm. least, you know, buying into a, a certain process, for example, um, but sometimes, yeah, it's just those people that, that choose not to. Um, yeah, and the, hard, the hard thing with that as well is because you get, you know, people come and see an advisor. They don't come and see you, you know. So some people go and see a life coach, right? Mm. But people that come and see us have come and seen us because they don't want to go and see a life coach, right? Um, and it's probably more of an, in, in America, it's probably much bigger, the whole um life coaching, you know, everyone gets therapy, that sort of stuff. Yeah. In Australia, we're probably not not as that way inclined. But a lot of people will seek financial advice. And again, it's it's because they they're not sure what they're after, but they think they should do it. And we end up doing a lot of life coaching with clients, right? When you're yeah. when you're doing a purpose values based approach. And clients absolutely love it. Um, so so again it's it's part of our job i suppose if we're taking that approach if if that's how how our business run to to show them that there's more to it than just that financial advice and most clients i've found um when they engage at that level they they realize oh this isn't yeah it isn't what i thought it was going to be it's it's far more and far deeper than that and um so in our in our initial client process as well we, you know, we tell the stories of our other clients that, you know, we've got clients who have been clients for 10 or 15 years and they pay us lots of money because they, you know, they, so we've built trust, which takes time. You've got to earn that. They know that we know everything about them, often more than anyone else in their lives. They know that everything that we do, we do is going to be in aid of them achieving everything that's important to them. And they kind of know where they're going through doing, you know, lifelong interactive cash flow modeling and various exercises. Um, they get that confidence to the point where they, they almost say, oh, look, I know what you're doing. Just keep doing what you're doing. I don't really worry too much about the investments and the tax and all that. Just keep doing what you're doing because it means that we don't have to worry about money anymore. Yeah. And so with new clients, we'll often say, look, you're not going to be at that level and, and you won't understand that, right? But our goal in our engagement is to get you to that point, however, however long it takes us to get you to that point. So in the beginning of our relationship, the value that you're going to perceive is going to be the tangible stuff like tax and um, super strategies and returns and risk management and insurance and all that sort of stuff, cash flow management. But after a period of time, you're not going to really care about the intricacies of those things anymore you just know that they're done and because they're done and the way we do them and because we've talked about purpose and we're on the same path to something far deeper in their lives, then they're not going to worry about as much and it becomes about those bigger picture things is where the value is, which is all the intangible stuff. Um, 
So, so to help those clients in the early phases, we explain to them that this is how it's going to work. You're not going to get it yet, but over time you will. And once you get it, it'll, it'll be completely different. Yeah. I'm a big fan of that positioning as well. That that's, that's really good. So because sometimes it is a bit too big of a step for not even sometimes, I guess, the majority of time, you know, you walk in, you either had an advisor before and it was probably, uh, you know, it was not probably definitely done in a certain way. It would have been done in the way that the advisor wanted to provide that advice. And it probably wasn't um, purpose driven um, because if, from my point of view, I, I don't hear the word purpose in, in terms of being an upfront part of advice very often. Um, and, or, the, or on the other side of the coin, perhaps they've never had an advisor before and they definitely, definitely are not expecting uh, to talk about their purpose in life. Unless, of course, maybe you've, you've given them some upfront videos or mm. uh, documentation um, to let them know that that's how you work. But it's certainly it is a step into the deep end. And I like that idea where you're saying we're going to, you know, talk about this and your, your life is obviously multifaceted, complex. You've got um, rational monetary things to look at. You've got emotional and qualitative things to look at. And all that together creates a big map and at the middle of that map is purpose, and but everything else that comes off, um, you know, from the extremes or the extremities of, of this of the purpose, uh, is very complex, and it's going to take us a long time to get there. And you might not fully understand it at first, but you will get there. Ah, oh, I tell you what, if I went into some, if I went into a financial planner's office and they said that to me, I would feel, <laughs> I would feel very secure, and I was in safe hands. So that's that's a really cool client experience, man. Yeah, it's and and it's it's funny, right? It's just brutal honesty, right? So if you just mm. you know forgetting about dropping all, if, if you just drop all drop all the guards, drop all the walls, and just go, you know what? I can talk to you about what we do and how it helps our clients as much as I want, but you know what? You're not actually going to get it, and that's okay. Yeah, you're not going to get it. I understand that. That's you know, how could you? You haven't experienced it. Yeah, but once you do at your own pace, whenever that time is, I have total confidence that you will, you know, you'll absolutely get so much value out of this and you won't even question anything when you do start getting that value. And if at any point in time you don't think that you're getting that value, then you shouldn't be a client. And that is totally, again, you know, if you can be confident enough to say that and let, because it's true, right? If clients yeah. aren't getting value, then they shouldn't be paying us a fee. That's hands that, down. Yeah. That, that's the way it should be. Um, it doesn't have to be a sales pitch. It's just we know that this is what, how it works and we know that nearly every one of our clients gets this value and you will. You just don't get it yet and you don't know what it feels like because, you know, as they say, it, it doesn't matter what you say to a client. It's, it's how you make them feel. Yeah. Um, That's really good. Um, yeah, considering my, my limit of uh, knowledge about you before we chatted was uh, your LinkedIn post. It doesn't surprise me at all. But I've had such a, a deep and me. I, I feel like I've had financial planning out of this uh, out of this podcast. So, <laughs> mate, thank you very much. Uh, that was really enjoyable. Um, uh, obviously, you're on LinkedIn. Um, we'll we'll make sure we include your um, your website in in the show notes. Um, I'm I'm sure advisors can reach out and say hi if they're Absolutely. um if they're ever interested and um man thank you so much for coming on and sharing your insights and your value and I, yeah like i said earlier in the podcast i think advisors listen to this and um, take on board what you've been saying i think that they can really improve their advice so thanks again man no worries Clint. thanks for the chat